we will try to cover the portions given by telangana service commission and meanwhile we will not just stick to the portion we will try to look around what are there so that if a question being asked from in and out of that specific topic you should be able to answer that as well because covering only portion will not be helpful we will have to look around a little bit in and out of that portion what all related to that portion and so uh, such things topic in that is your masonry unit your brick masonry stone masonry so we will try to see what types of bonds are there but before jumping to the bonds what types of bonds and what are the different types what are their different uses we'll have a look of what bricks are what are the uses and what are the different types of brick we are going to use without that idea it will not be helpful to just come and start with the bonding how bricks are bonded together so we will look into a little bit of the brick we will look into the typologies of it so that if a question being asked on the types of brick or any special special types of brick you will be able to answer that as well any point in the lecture you feel you have to ask something you can raise your hand or you can just write it in the chat box do not wait for the end or something you just ask then and there okay so let us start then our first topic is brick arrangement where we will discuss various type of bonds it will include stone as well as brick so we will look into the different types of bond of the brick like how bricks are arranged then we will jump into stones now we will see how uh, we create walls using stones then we will try to relate them their advantages and disadvantages so it will proceed this way then we will come to our next topic and it will go on today we are going to discuss this thing bonds in brick and stone so it will be basically your masonry unit now brick so many times this question was asked for the constituents of brick what brick is composed of so this is the basic composition of your brick it has alumina silica and silt in the major quantity and lime iron oxide and magnesia covers the almost one fourth part of your brick the red color in the brick you see brick is red in color usually so the red color in the brick is because of this presence of iron oxide in the brick so this is the basic constituent of brick brick it composed of simply these things okay we will quickly look into the manufacturing of brick how they are manufactured what are the different processes involved with this we are not going much deeper into the manufacturing we will try to go deeper in the bonding part but we will have an idea ki how these are manufactured so that if any step is being asked we will able to answer yeah these steps are there and we used to see these steps there when we are on to manufacturing of the brick so first we prepare the soil where ground is covered so the top soil is removed almost below 200 mm this soil is taken out it is being mixed properly water is mixed then it is uh, aggregated evenly once you have the soil ready the brick is molded using molder there are molders brick molders using that brick is molded into different shapes once you have the brick being shaped that is usually in dry state mostly you have to dry you have, you know wet state mostly you have to dry it for that different drying techniques are used it could be natural you just keep the brick in air it will take some time and you will dry it could be me mechanical like you are using a control atmosphere where hot air is blown and through that the brick is dry now it all depends upon your demand and what is the size of your infrastructure or where how many bricks you are preparing on a daily basis or on a weekly basis it will all depend upon your how much production is you can go with the natural if your production is low if you can use your machinery units or uh, the mechanical systems if you have if you have a larger amount to produce once bricks are dried they are sent into chambers to burn so bricks are burned now this burning also have different uh, techniques it could be just in a mold it could be burnt using a fuel or it can go through a separate burning chamber with the complete machinery where on one side brick is entered on other side you get the burnt brick so these systems involves the manufacturing of brick so basically there are four different stages from preparation to molding to dry and then finally be burned the brick 
and then we get the final brick. Now the brick, whatever we are getting, we used to classify that in different classes of brick. We will see what different classes of bricks are. But before that, we will look into the size of brick. This is an important slide. The size of brick, there is two categories. One you can see is the modular brick. Second is the nominal size. Now nominal size is the size which we use when we are calculating the volume of the wall, when we are calculating how much brick is required, this nominal size is used. Why? Because this nominal size includes the thickness of your mortar as well. So you will have a brick layer, you will have a brick layer, then you will have a mortar layer on that, then you will again have a brick layer. So if you are calculating the volume of wall using bricks, you will have to consider this brick with the added mortar in that. Now the brick actually in size is 90 centimeter into 9 into 9. So this is the actual size of the brick. When you will consider the mortar, that is the brick compared or measured with the mortar, your size will increase as 20 centimeter into 10 into 10. So this is your nominal size of the brick. Remember, remember the term nominal size and actual size. And this is the basic differences of nominal and actual size of your brick. This is the mold way in which the soil, the prepared soil is kept and it is then dried to burnt and the different step goes on after this. Okay. Now, once we have the brick prepared, as I said, we classify the bricks in different categories. We have the first class brick, we have the second class brick, we have third and the fourth class of the brick. So if classification is being asked, within how many classes bricks are arranged, you will be able to answer yes, there are four classes, first, second, third and fourth. The basic differences you will be able to see here. In the first class brick, the molder is used table molded. That means, that means the brick can be either molded on the ground and a table is separate table is used to mold the brick. These bricks have uniform shape and size and they are much better than the ground molded bricks they are big because they are done in bulk and in this one by one bricks are molded. So they are much better than these ground molded bricks. So in first class, they are usually table molded bricks, but in kilns, they are usually defectless and used for superior quality of permanent nature works. So these are the premium quality of brick, the first class brick used for superior quality work and permanent work as well. So if being asked brick used for the superior quality or permanent work, you will answer it yes, it's first class brick we usually use for such kind of work. Let's move to second class now. Now in second class, what happened? The brick usually ground molded. So it is a little bit, the situation is a little bit deteriorated than the table molded base, but it is still burnt in kiln. It has slight defects, not major defects are there. It had slight defects and it is usually used where brick masonry is to be plastered. So if you are creating a brick masonry and that is to be plastered, which usually happens if you are not that showing the uh, texture of brick, if your brick is not exposing your brick, you will be plastering the brick, brick masonry usually. So this is what happens when you plaster your brick and we use a second class brick there. So you can see that this is the usual uses here going nowadays. Now we have third class brick, which is the third category of it. It is again ground molded, but the change is here. It is burned in clamps. Now in clamps and kilns, there are separate units of burning the brick. I have not covered that part because that will be much that will in a way go much deeper into the manufacturing of that since my focus is on the bonding like the topic was big bonds and stone bonds on masonry bonding in masonry that is why i have not covered these things clamps or uh, kiln burn but you can you can be able to get that in clamps on ground as i mentioned separate layer of bricks are arranged and between them fuels are arranged and they are burned so they are not proper burning happens there. Since there, uh, there is a man problem, there is a, a workmanship issues. But what happens is kilns is kilns are having proper arrangement, uh, proper burning arrangement, proper 
situation for arranging the brick and they are arranged properly the burning happens at an, e at an even rate so that is why they have good burning property now since they are burned in flames they have, they have big significant effects and the uses are usually unimportant and temporary construction so you can see the basic differences between these these were very important these were usually used where the brick used to be plastered this was used where your work is temporary and it is unimportant it's not that important this is not going to be there for a very longer in time of or if you are not expecting it to be used for a very longer period you can use the third class brick let's come to the fourth class now let's see what happens there in the fourth class brick if you will see it is either overburned or underburned now this is an important point for the fourth class brick it is either overburned or underburned in both the cases it cannot be classified in any of this the category it has to move in the fourth category it usually have significant effects and the uses if you can see aggregate concrete in roads floors and foundation structures foundation structures means bulk in bulk they are used if you have a create a bulky structure this four class bricks are used as an aggregate also they are used since their texture is not that good they have significant if they uh, defects now being used in the foundation structure it has one more purpose it covers one more purpose there when it is used in foundation structure what happens is when the bricks are overburned they become more resistant to water they become more resistant to water and they become more brittle this brittle nature with resistance in water makes them suitable to be used in foundation since in the foundation it usually uh, used to be in the context of water so this property helps it and that supports its presence in foundation so this is why also it is written uh, okay so is my screen visible to others can anyone uh, just answer it ki is it a problem for everyone my screen is not visible others can see so since there is no uh, okay others can see or oh, it is visible for others so i will suggest you to please try to rejoin or uh, since it is visible to others okay thank you thank you for okay so yes so that is why this is importantly used in the foundation structures so next time if it is being asked why or if in it is in your uh, professional life also yeah yes in your professional life also if you are using a foundation structure if you have this break or one one break you can get this idea yes we can use this in the foundation it will in a way strengthen my uh, foundation okay so these are the basic categories of break we see and the differences basic differences as i discussed in mainly majorly three or four points you see what points differ in what brick will be able to get the basic idea of the four categories of bricks and their uses as well okay now once we see ki how they are manufactured and how they can be classified we will look into some specially shaped bricks this is also important now you can see ki we are covering each topic slightly we are not going much deep into that but we have now idea of how it is manufactured uh what are the different classification that is and that is important you will have to look around when you will talking when you are talking about masonry or brick units now let us see some specially shaped bricks which also helps us in create the masonry at many points so first one is bull nose you can see there is a nose in created at one of the corner and it's called rounded coin we will see what coin is that is also we have so it is rounded coin so that means at a corner it is being uh, rounded next one we have a cant or plane so it is usually used in plane where the first, this will be the first brick and you are going to uh, start your plane from there it is being shaded by it has it has an offset at one of the corner not being rounded so you see, look at here they both have similarity they both have changes at their one of the corners that's why i kept them together one is rounded and second one is just offset in the diagonality one became bull nose and second one is your cant or plinth brick this is the difference between these two bricks 
let's look the next one circular brick used for circular works they are of circular shape when arranged together they are usually used to create a curve or some circular shapes so this is one of the special cases your squint brick what is the use of squint is it is actually a improved form of this cant you can see it is being offset from the both the direction the basic use look at this image the basic use of this brick is when you have a wall going in a straight line and suppose you have to turn the wall all at an angle this brick helps to create that angle since it has this offset second brick can be stacked from there and you can see using this offset this uh, another wall can another wall can begin at this point and at an obtuse or acute angle now this will be an acute one the other angle form will be an obtuse one so from the angle perspective you can see he we can angle our running wall with an obtuse or acute angle using paint okay coping brick now uses of coping brick is now is to protect your uh during the wall which are open from top this actually happens with our garden walls or uh, parapet walls we have to cover that from top so their coping helps coping is a protective cavity covering that we provide at the top of our, our wall three basic coping techniques are mentioned here camfort half round and saddle bag brick so using this we remove that straight that horizontal surface from the wall so that if it rains or something comes up on it that it does not just stop there it does not uh, create that moisture to go inside the wall it just removes that water then and there from the top of your wall it protects your wall in that way and different coping techniques are mentioned here these were our special brick like let's look at some more special bricks our next one is the cornice brick cornice brick if you have uh, learned that you know, if you have read that history of architecture where we have used cornice in the entablature uh, i mean the columns in the top of columns cornice are used in this places so cornices are decorating bricks they are used at top of your column or you can use it if you have a wall going on there and this is your roof you can use it as this point also so at such point this cornice brick you can see as you can see they are used they are usually in a decorative shape and one after another they are used so that they create a continuous line of this arch or this curve whatever is there they can create a continuity in this structure these are your cornice brick usually used for decorative or aesthetic purposes okay let's see the next one next one we have is perforated or we can also have hollow bricks so difference basic difference between this perforated and the hollow bricks are perf if you have to in the term perforation perforation means smaller openings so perforated bricks usually have smaller openings its volume if we can see related to the hollow clay brick its volume is more than the hollow clay brick so volume of hollow clay brick will be the least then will come the volume of uh, perforated brick then will come the brick, normal brick or solid brick you can say normal or solid brick so this will be the volume ratio of your brick hollow brick will be the least then will come the perforated and then the solid brick why the reason is hollow bricks have larger openings related to perforated bricks but if it is a complete solid brick it will have no openings at all solid bricks have no openings at all compared to perforated but hollow has larger openings compared to perforated so this will be your uh, categorization based on your volume if being asked volume consideration the volume difference between these three bricks i hope you will be able to answer because you know the reason now and you know the difference between perforated hollow or solid brick now why they will be used they will be used to reduce the weight of construction since they have a low volume they have a low density they will be used to reduce the weight of the construction so if they are not non load bearing they do not have that much load or any consideration for that they can be used and they will be reduced to your weight and weight reduction is uh, i mean an important thing weight reduction is important things and it matters a lot when you are constructing a structure your weight matters a lot okay 
So this was your perforated and hollow bricks. Paving bricks are used for paving paths. So they are pavers for paving bricks. They are usually non slippery surface. That is an important thing. They are usually non slipping surface. And uh, they are meant to be present in open. They are less uh, water absorbent. So, so they are usually meant to be used in open. And their density is a little bit bigger than the normal brick density. So they are high, 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 they have high density. That means their weight is more than the normal bricks. And they have a non slippery coating, non slippery surface at the top. So their surface is rough than the normal bricks which we are using in our construction of walls so these were our bricks now we have the slight idea of our bricks how that is manufactured and how that is uh, classified now if you come to any point where you want key i want to learn it much deeper or i want to learn what this is you can ask any time or not if you're not getting that in this class you can ask for that in the next class or any other upcoming class. If you are going through that, you will be. You can ask at any. Don't try to write. I am enough here to write. I do not require any help. So don't do this. Okay. Uh, sources which I usually use that is at the that will you will get at the end. But sources I will usually use the book of DK Ching if you have used that is the primary source of any um, usual book you can see any usual book or any usual presentation which you are creating or which anyone else has created for building construction always go for decaging building construction book that's the um i'll not say you know not the form space and order there is one other book of decaging that is building construction uh and material something like that so use that book uh, now I will not say you just order it. If you, you can arrange it from it in library, it will be great. But that's a very heavy book, and I think that have almost sixteen hundred to seventeen hundred pages. So that's a heavier book, and uh, almost all the teachers usually who wants to know it from the basic, they go through it. So I will suggest if you are going through, if you have want something that is prominent and you can trust please go for that. Other sources, if you will mention that, they miss some point. Our, my lecture will work because you will uh, one point you will save your time. You will not go have to go through that much of thick thing because if you will start reading DK Chingna, it will make you, it will take some time to first get you acquaintance with that. You cannot just start reading DK Ching, I mean, anytime. You try to see that if you have the book, to try to see that it will get you some time to get acquainted with, with the book there is a way to read that book even you cannot it cannot be read like normal book yeah i think you have gone through the book so you know that it cannot be read through the like the normal book it will take some time i mean a month or even more so right now i think you don't have that time so you can go to the ppt it basically covers all the topics from there and uh, it will save your time and in the main time there is a lot of things there what I have prepared here is completely dependent based on your syllabus. Now, obviously, as I'm saying, I would cover some extra portion in and around the syllabus portion. If you think you want in much deeper, if you want to go deep, you can ask me, I will provide you. Or it's on you, you can also go to the book since the source is decaching. Okay, so that's your paving blocks now. Now we will get into the uh, terms part which is actually we have to discuss now we will come to the topic which is actually being asked there this was just your basic understanding to refresh you what a brick is how can you order it because if you know the brick machinery now suppose brick machinery is being asked from me key what is the what are the courses if you will not know about the brick then there is no point of uh, knowing that because basic knowledge is also a thing you cannot just start uh, studying from any point there is a direction there is a starting point there is an end point so if something is asked at first you should know if from where it is being asked your second step will be to answer that you know the correct answer or not so knowing the point where your thing is asked is the first thing answering that will be your another step so move in steps i will suggest okay you have time give it some time you all are sincere enough you have heard you will are trying, you will have attending the lecture. So if you will give it some time, it will be easier for you. I think you hope you all will get it. So please give it some time and 
use your energy in right direction so terminologies let us start some terminologies first before beginning to the courses header and stretcher two usual terms which you will see and which you will visually mostly see when you will look in the courses of brick header and stretcher header is nothing but remember the term head stretcher is nothing but remember the term stretch so header is when bricks are arranged and you will be able to see their heads these are the heads assume this brick this this standing brick is called soldier i hope you know that this standing brick if you will keep a brick standing in a machinery unit or say it will call a soldier so if it is a soldier this is the head if it is laid in this way you will be see their head so this unit is called header now if they are stretched and laid in a stretched manner this kind of construction will be known as stretcher so if you will look here this is your stretcher courses the bricks are kept stretched these are your header courses the bricks are laid in such a way okay now if we can relate it to that each layer of the stretcher course will be of what size each layer of your brick and here each layer of your brick usually will, will be of what size is this will be usually of 5 inches this will be usually of 10 inches so it is double of it now if you have to create a 10 inch of brick bar using this uh, stretcher bond you will have to go with two brick but in the single brick you can go with that although you do not think it will take more bricks it will take less brick the volume will be same you will have to use the same number of brick in both the courses but headers and stretcher we will discuss in this way some other terminologies we have is bed bat and closer three different things bed bed is suppose one layer of stretcher is being laid okay this layer will be called a bed any layer any course be it stretcher be it, uh, be it header this will be called a bed a bed of bricks now another layer will come this will be another bed after that another layer will come so one by one layer will come and each will form a uh, bed okay next one is your bat now bat is half of the brick if you can see the image it is half of your brick and brick is being cut longitudinally from the length from the length uh, from the length portion it is cut it is your half of the brick the confusion will come in this closer and this bat so bat just understand ki half of your brick is cut but if you will come to the closer you have king closer queen closer and bevel closer or half queen you can also call it half queen the last one king closer is a, you have seen this somewhere it is half of the queen so this is your king queen closer from the corner it is recessed in the queen closer half of the brick from the length side is being cut if from this half of the length only half is cut this is your half queen closer now remember the term queen closer will have a half queen but bat does not have a half bat okay queen and the half queen queen is from the length brick is half and half so if you will assume it a, a person queen is symmetrical just remember the term queen is symmetrical if queen is symmetrical that means it is being cut from assume big as a person as a soldier a soldier is being cut from here one portion one portion half of it half of it and they will be symmetrical but bat from the bat you will not see ki bat will be a symmetrical one okay queen is symmetrical now bat why bat is not symmetrical since it's a person if you will cut it from here you will not get it symmetrical okay queen is symmetrical use this line you will not confuse otherwise there will be a lot of confusion here okay it will help you to quickly answer it even if you don't have a confusion you will think for a minute ke acha ye tha kya ye tha kya it will help you in that also okay queen is symmetrical next thing so we will queen and queen and half queen and king and half bat this is done let us see the next one queen or queen so i discussed we will see it on the next uh, in the upcoming so here we have it queen and queen so queen is a corner brick it is corner brick used to use in the where the corners of walls are created okay 
these bricks are called queen bricks you know they can be of the same size of this brick or they can be of some larger size to create an emphasis in this example a larger brick is used to create that emphasis ki yes these are queens since i have to make you understand ki queens how they are different i have used these bricks so these are your queens quint is another this is in both the direction and where they are used as we discussed they are used to create angled walls where walls we have to move take the walls at an angle these here we use these squint bricks okay now some more terminology let's see top and toothing so you see na ki when you have that ki uh, brick bonds or big layers are there these terminologies are important these terminologies are important a lot of questions will ask from terminologies only so if option is there the this line is given and some options are there you will be able to guess ki yes this is the correct option and for this what you will have to do just teaching will not help you will have to go through it again and again at least two to three times minimum go more that will much that will be really good at least go through this two to three times then only you will be able to get it and do not try to memorize all this or uh, no of course you have to buy her something but try to relate it with them to some other thing so that you can remember okay you don't otherwise even if you memorize it for many days na that time you will have that confusion that exam pressure will create that confusion try to relate it with some life things try to relate it with your life or any other uh trivial things which you can relate it to so try to use that technique especially in building construction any exam not only this uh, competition exams if you are preparing for gate on any other exam try to relate it to other things so that you will be able to remember it at that time quickly and you will be sure as well queen or skin okay two things we have discussed next we have frog and two thing two thing is na see this opening is created in wall and then voids are left in the wall to sometimes they are done to connect a perpendicular wall to this wall sometimes they are just left if this wall is to be extended further they are they are just left uh, suppose it is being completely covered and i am joining a wall there this bond will not be that strong but two thing is left so that another if you are going to continue this wall later on you can create the same pattern okay so this will provide the same strength almost for that also two thing is used and if you have to go in the perpendicular direction that will also help both way two thing helps now earlier times when you have the roof and if you have roof you have that um what say staircase covering staircase stayed in that two thing were used to i mean reach on the staircase so they are sometimes also used that as that staircase so you can relate it from that whatever you remember is use those to relate it to your things so that you will be able to remember it on the exam we think now you can go through this image again and again this will explain you many different things at one point my frog is what is the use of this frog or what frog is when bricks are laid one upon another one upon another there is a layer of concrete fixed in between now if these two are perfectly straight the bond will not be that strong okay this bond will not be that strong there is a frog created a void created in the brick so that the mortar can reach inside that and when the mortar will get settled now you see this blocks the brick this strengthens the bond this blocks the brick in this manner so this is the purpose of using a frog to strengthen this brick to brick layer bond now if we'll try to slide it will not be able to slide if this have this mortar has completely settled up this has uh strengthened it yes jim jam biscuit exactly but in jim jam biscuit your jam is visible uh, from that other biscuit this is your lower biscuit this is your upper biscuit your jam is visible there but in this your lower frog will not be visible this brick is not hollow at this point this is the difference otherwise yes it is okay let's see the next one now we will look at the different bonds we have in that then we will come to brick bonds first we will get the complete idea then we will come at the brick, for the brick bonds at just once so that it will be at a single place when you want to go through it you can just go through it without using these now stretcher and header bonds 
stretcher brick we understood header brick we understood header bricks are it is placed head to head stretcher bricks are it is placed in a stretch manner so if the bricks are arranged in a header manner uh, sorry if bricks are arranged in a stretcher manner they are stretched and arranged this type of bond form is stretcher bond as you can see in the image also if the bricks are arranged in a header manner where you will be able to see the head of the brick it is arranged in this thing it is considered to be a header bond so stretcher and header bond the most useful bonds in the bricks next one is the english bond in english bond what happens is there is a stretcher layer then there is a header layer then there is a stretcher and hair so you can say alternate courses of headers and stretchers are placed there okay in english bond and this is the most commonly used ones so you might have also seen that whatever the big work if you have seen this is mostly used it will provide you that strength uh, because just by using only headers or only stretcher does not give us that much strength so this is the basically used one and we can only use it for that 10 inch or the thicker walls you can see if we are using a 5 inch of the wall we will we'll not be able to use that for that you will have to if you are using header you have to just uh, create an offset in the header you cannot just lay it one upon another so we will get to see these as well now the flame is spawned english was alternate header and stretcher now the flame is is you do not have header and stretcher in alternate courses. These layers are called courses. You have header and stretcher in single course. In the same course, you have header, you have header, and you have stretcher, header, stretcher. So in the same course, you have both that. This is your flame bond. Its elevation will look something like that. And this could be created of one brick that is 10 inches and one and a half brick as well if you can see this this is for the one brick bit this is for one and a half brick bit so for those bits this flame is, is created if it is for one brick it is simple flame is if it is for one and a half brick it is double flame okay so these are the two typologies of flame is bond next one we have is a rat trap bond why it's a rat trap bond why it's a called a rat trap is have gaps in between the walls in between the bricks now their basic use is it has a place where you have to uh, create an energy efficient building and your envelope you have to create a stick or envelope in such a manner that it is not allowing the energy to move from inside to outside or move from outside to inside so this prevent this energy flow if you have to create an intact uh intact in, in envelope in your building we use certain we use such kind of bonds how this helps is if you have an externally higher temperature or lower temperature the connection it decreases the rate of conduction because if it is a complete brick the connection can happen to the brick but in rat trap there is air in between which and the air is a bad conductor of heat energy okay so this prevents this conduction and it strengthens your envelope much more than the normal brick if you are using a single brick or if you are using another bonds so this is basically why rat traps are used uh, now its uh, demerits are not the, they are they sometimes become the home of rodents they use, uh, they develop there and it becomes difficult to manage that the damping if there is a damping and water gets you want water and seeps in that this will create another i mean challenge for managing that so these are some of the challenges of rat trap bond and the uses we already have discussed one more type of bond we have is raking bond now this raking bond is usually used for pavements this is usually used for pavements but in order to provide strength to brick wall where the longitudinal strength is required this is my brick wall no not this sorry for my drawing <coughs> this is your brick wall it tends to turn at some places where you have to provide that strength see uh, you have to take care of that overturning you can use this raking bonds 
images you can see at such places. So somewhere they are used for this aesthetic purpose, aesthetical purpose. You know, see used to prevent that overturning because it provides that support. Now there are two categories: diagonal and herring. Diagonal, they are just placed diagonally one after another. Uh, they are just placed diagonally one after another. In herring one, one brick is kept over another, then it goes. I think I have the image. Yeah. So this is the diagonal diagonally placed. Herring, it happens in this manner. So diagonal and herring are two categories of breaking bond. Now, once again, they are usually used for pavement. <coughs> Giving brick. Just a minute. Okay, mm, let's continue then. Now we'll come to bonds. What are the different types of bonds and their uses? <laughs> so from here, please look at carefully. Yeah, sorry for that. Okay, so first one, running bond. Now please look at it carefully from here because I think this is your premium section. And your most question will last from here. Others also, all obviously, there will be chances for the others as well. This is good to know because if you have to crack the exam, you should have to know extra than others. So, was good, but from here, please look at it carefully. So, first one is just running bond. Running bond is usually used for cavity walls and overlapping stretchers. Stretchers are used there. Stretchers are used there. You can see stretchers overlap. And they are offset. They have an offset from there. So as I discussed, usually if we have to create a five inches of wall, we use stretchers there, and they are kept one after another. Their center line does not align. Their center line are offset from each other. So this is usually we use for, for a thinner wall or for a five inch of the walls. And this is called a running bond. It just goes on one upon another in such a manner. Okay. So look at the image name and uses. Let's see the next one then. Common bond. In common bond, what happens is it is similar to running bond, but <coughs> there is a layer of header after each five, six courses of running or stretcher layer. So it is only have this specific thing which differs it from a running bond. In a common bond, after each five or six courses, there is a header courses laid down to get the difference. That is your common bond now, running and common, two things discuss. Now again, if you have that five inches, it will be difficult to create this. That is why we usually use for this running brick again. Next one, stack bond. Now stack bond, nothing different, nothing happened. It is just stacked, stacked, like some material or some boxes one upon another you can see it is just stacked one upon another <clears throat> this is your stack bond now this is usually not in use because this creates this huge probability of creating cracks on this wall since this line is running continuously in both horizontal and vertical position since there is no offset there is no i mean centralization of the brick this there is a huge possibility of cracking in this brick and it's uh, I mean the worst one which we discussed so this stacking brick is not at all used but if it is used like this it will be a stack bond brick is stacked one upon another let us look at the next one flemish bond now flemish I have already discussed what a flemish bond is alternate courses of headers <laughs> And stretcher uh, alternate versus of headers and structure in the same bed. In the same bed, they have headers and uh, stretcher at well. We look at the Flemish in somewhat, I mean, try to distinguish Flemish layers. We will see the types of Flemish layers as well. If you will just see the Flemish bond, each header is centered above and below a stretcher. So if you will see a header, it is centered on and below a stretcher take any header you will be able to see it is center above and 
below the stretchers. So this is your simple Flemish bone. We have discussed that. Let us see the improved category of this. Now the improved category of this Flemish bond is Flemish cross bond. So what is the difference between this Flemish cross bond? Now this is a modified one as discussed. Alternate headers and stretchers with stretching courses. Obviously there are alternate stretchers and headers, but with stretching courses, there is extra stretchers added to that. There are extra stretches added to that and then it goes on, uh, no, not this one. There are stretchers added to that. So there is a layer of stretchers and the, another layer will be a Flemish. So it is a stretcher, Flemish, stretcher, Flemish, and it goes something like that, right? Related with the image, stretcher, Flemish, stretcher, Flemish, something like that, okay? You can see this is a stretcher layer, this is a Flemish layer, stretcher layer, Flemish layer, and it goes on. So that is your Flemish cross bond. The name is Flemish cross bond, and it's the improved form of Flemish bond. So if being asked the improved form of uh, Flemish bond will have a uh, same layer or a distinguished layer or even these layers are mentioned, this line is mentioned and there are options Flemish bond, Flemish cross bond, Flemish diagonal bond, English bond. So you will be able to answer this if you are knowing it. So I hope you will be able to answer this. Uh, try to read that, try to relate that. There is, there are not much, I think there are uh, mainly six or seven typologies basically. If you know what a Flemish is, if you know what a stretcher is, if you know uh, what a header is, you'll be able to get it. Uh, one extra header, Flemish codes has alternate header, not extra, alternate header. Flemish have, uh, sorry, stretchers. Flemish have stretchers. No, this one which I mentioned, no, this is not there. This is not, um, I think this is in the image, but this is not that important. I mean, this there is nothing, it has extra headers. Okay. It's just key, it will have a alternate stretcher courses in them. Okay, so this is your uh, Flemish cross bond. We have another typology in the Flemish only, which is Flemish diagonal bond. Now in this now, it is again the improved form of cross bond only, but the offset is provided such that it creates a pattern, diagonal pattern. The offsets are created that way. Now, if you will relate it to the Flemish cross bond, it is obviously Flemish cross bond. See, stretchers, Flemish, stretcher, Flemish, and it goes on. But the offset is created in such a manner that it creates a diagonal pattern at the center you see diagonal pattern running at the then okay the same this way so you can see the offset how these are offset if a stretcher course is laid the second stretcher moves one by four then the next one then the next one then the next one and like this so it is created in such a way that this diagonal is created it's obviously for the aesthetical purposes and where they will use it we will not use it where we have to plaster the wall where we are exposing the brick surface where our interior is such that we are showing the brick surface on that there we will obviously create it so that was the different typologies of your Flemish one you got the image and you can go through it filter on as well okay let us see the next one garden wall now garden wall, as the name suggests, it is, I mean, it will not take much load. It is usually used for gardens and the height may be seven, eight feet or so. And the stretches are, has a sequence of header and three stretches. Read, read the lines, there will be a header and three stretches. Then again, a header, then again, a three stretches. So it will continue like that. Now, these are usually thicker ones. These are usually a 10 inches wall in a garden wall because they are freestanding walls. They are also called freestanding walls. We will see the name, I think, in the uh, walls where we'll see the types of walls. 
so it is usually a free standing wall where just a wall is there nothing on top or something is nothing top or not or something is there so in the free standing wall the width is little bit large so usually use the 10 inches wall and this garden wall bonds are used so now the point is now the point is it will have distinguishing in the header and stretcher. so you can see how these header and stretchers are important their arrangement different kinds of arrangement are changing your bond it's not key you have using or uh, something extra or something from outer in it you are just playing with the header and stretcher courses and you are creating so much typologies in bond this will this actually creates the confusion now just go through it once again you will be able to get it running on will just have stretchers common one will have stretchers but will have a, a header so header introduced at the common okay next stack bond are just stacks stack bond are just stacks claim is again header stretcher header stretcher thing and it's uniform form flaming cross and flaming di diagonals diagonals also you will not forget flaming diagonals flaming cross is it's just that it has a complete layer of stretchers so this is how it is differentiated from uh, normal flaming bonds okay garden as discussed is something like that where we will have a header and three stretchers then again a header and three stretchers and continues let us see the next one. English bond is already being discussed, but since we are keeping it at a single, we'll try to see it from one more time and we'll try to relate it with the headers and stretchers. So English bond has alternate headers and stretchers. You can see one complete bed of stretcher, then one complete bed of header, then stretcher and then header. So it's the simplest one, English bond. It's the simplest bond. It combines headers and stretchers, but in different layers not on the same layer in different layer if being used in the same layer it will be a flemish bond so the bond in which headers and stretchers are used in the same layer it will be flemish the bond in which header and stretcher are used in uh, different layers it is english okay so these were our bonds in masonry units some of you might be confused what is going on how will you be able to learn remember all this but it's not that difficult if you will go through it as i said twice or thrice if you are going for more that will be really good but at least go for it twice or thrice try to relate it you will be able to get it not once or twice or thrice you will get it trust me okay let us see the next one uh, now this joint are important what happens ki when bricks are created one upon another there is a possibility ki water can seep inside that and it can deteriorate your structure for this protection these uh, joints are created and many a times these joints are asked the structure the shape will be given and it is asked ki which one is this is it rake is it extruded is it rounded is it struck what is this so it is important you remember the shape and the name you have to remember this now you have to buy hard this there is no other option you have to buy hard this the shape and the name related to that is important now let us start one by one i will try to give something if i can so concave if you have learned about the concave and convex surfaces this is your concave side this is your convex side concave The side which has a depth is your concave side. The side which is, I mean, bloated, which is coming out is your convex side. So concave side, a cave-like structure is there, rounded. This is your concave. I cannot do it for the, I mean, all of this. Whatever I can, I will do it for you. Other, by heart it. There is no other option. Okay, now with that. With that, you will have a struct that means from the top it is offset, but at the bottom it has not offset. Struct is from the bottom it is offset. So now you can see there. There is a slight difference. 
if it is being offset from top it is weather if it is offset from bottom it is struck now how will you remember this let's relate it struck it start with s if you will see this the structure it creates an s there if you are trying to relate it it create an s there but in weather there is no s related struck and weather are similar this is your first point struck you will be able to identify so its the opposite will aapka weather ho jayega so i hope you will be able to get these two now struck and weather agar struck you got yes this is struck then weather that is the other one okay so struck and weather two things i hope you will get it plus as the name suggest f starts with a straight line now we will observe sir ki r bhi straight line se start ho raha hai e bhi straight line se start ho raha hai but i cannot do anything to this f start from the straight line so you can see it is being plus it has just i mean continuous it has just a continuous uh, texture it just goes on so this is your plus one rake one have raking raking means uh, no not not rest with the raking raking means i mean the inclined shape not raking okay this is your rake one and this is extruded so you will be able to see it is extruded outside yes belly fat <laughs> okay so it is being extruded outside okay so this is extruded you will able to get it just the rake one up yaad kar lo test i think i have explained ki how you can uh, remember it how you can by heart it okay concave concave surface weather we do not have to use this we have to use the struck we have a s shape the next one is a weather plus one is a straight one rake just the straight but a little bit inner extruded is extruded outside okay now this is it this is a different pointing or joint technique we use uh, between two layers of masonry units let us see the next one okay now we will come in the categories of walls bonds are discussed so little bit there that means how bricks are prepared now we have the bonds at the center now little bit there discuss a little bit here where they discuss the uh, bricks they are manufacturing then in a center we discuss at bonds which is a prime thing now little bit there we will discuss some types of walls okay let us see some types of walls as well so that uh, if that it, it's a mixed question of bond and typology of wall we will be able to relate that okay now masonry we use for i mean we use for uh, as a partition was as well we used is externally as well we use to create boundaries as well so there are different uses two major categories in which we categorize them uh upon its load bearing uh, technique or upon its load bearing category it is either load bearing or it is a non load bearing load bearing as name said it will take up some load but non load bearing will not take up load they are just there to partition the space or to segregate the space in different uh, types okay so that will be your non load bearing here we will discuss some load bearing wall its typology could be solid solid with ps faced or veneers let us see them one by one solid one in the simpler walls it is just a solid wall created by this so the bonds you can use here is either english bond flemish bond you cannot use a right a rat trap or some uh, cavity the bonds which are creating a cavity so it is will be completely solid your next one will be pier pier or pilaster solid wall with pier or pilaster so what are pier or pilaster if you have seen some wall suppose this is my wall and some portion is from the wall but they are not columns some portions which comes out of the wall line but they are not columns they provide the look of a column because once they are plastered be it a column or be it a wall you will not be able to identify it unless you are an architect or you if you are a common person you will not be able to identify it this pier are the part of the wall only but they are extruded from the wall lines to create uh, the surface of a column 
sometimes they are also done to create some space where you want to add something you have to uh, add a picture or you have to create this space for something specific uses we use this peer or else we used to provide it the aesthetic of the aesthetic of a column or to give it a look of a column to give that bulky look for structure so that is why these peers are used you can also call them false columns if you want but there is no such term i think just for your sake of understanding you can, can say you can call them false columns as well now which bonds could be used where you have seen ki some stretchers are there and some headers are there you can use such bonds here with stretcher and header courses so you can see their uses the uses of stretchers and here and how they are helpful okay so that was your solid wall with piers or pilasters this term is important piers or pilasters this term is important it is asked frequently pilaster or piers they are some kind of something kind of false columns now we have two more categories uh cavity walls face wall and veneer wall now cavity walls mein kuch nahi like it just uh, have a cavity there are two layers of brick arrangements and it will have a cavity in between now why we will use this and what are the disadvantages similar to rat trap bond cavity wall is used for specific energy efficiency purposes because it strengthens your envelope it makes your envelope heat i mean heat proof it does not enter or leave the envelope that is an important thing when you are creating an energy efficient structure this cavity are much helpful in that the issues will be there will be a development of development of rodents in that there might be water seeps in or uh, the seepage issues will be there so there are certain issues but yes that is why we create cavity walls two next categories we have is faced and veneer so this solid and solid with piers were similar in this just the additional part is your pilaster cavity wall will have cavity so i hope you will remember it there is nothing here in it faced and veneer will have an extra layer in the wall once you have erected your wall it will have an extra layer extra facing either with the faced or with the veneer then what is the difference between faced and veneer both work acting both work similar both have a similar work in facing some tile or marble or some other facing material is stick on the wall surface so if this is your wall surface wall line your facing will be just stick or pasted on your wall that is your facing but in the case of veneer walls if you know the term veneer what veneer is veneer is your thinner portion of your wood log if you are uh, cutting your wood log in a layer you are creating thinner layer which uh, happens with um, plywood in plywood we use thin layers of wood paste it one upon another provide it in a heat and pressure and then strengthen it so veneer layers are used from that the name i think have come veneer walls in it what happens is there is a wall but the facing is not pasted on that but it is being i think hanged you can say it is being hanged using a, a structure a supporting structure uh, it is usually at a distance from the wall now what are the key differences between these two yes cladding and curtain wall so what are the key differences in uses between these two now see if we look it from the energy transfer purpose this is in contact it can transfer the heat this again creates a gap of air in them so this will help to way to prevent that heat transfer again this provides you that aesthetic look if you are using a plywood it can get damp to the wall so if that second material which you are using from damping another thing is your uh for expansion if you have learned the term expansion and coefficient of expansion that different materials expand at a different rate suppose this is my two stones and this is a used in combination with some bricks now for the same temperature difference this can expand more 
and this can expand relatively less than the stone or the stone can expand less and the brick can expand more relative to the stone. In that case, what happens is one try to expand and one is preventing that expansion. So it tends to break. Same thing can happen in this case as well. If there is a paste step, what can happen is mm -hmm. one will try to expand and second will try to prevent that expansion. So the cracking may happen and they can both get separated. So there are simple, simple uh, there are several different uses techniques. There are several different design consideration, structural consideration. But the point is, if you know uh, what we have to create, if you know uh, what your thing is doing, like how we can create facing and how we can create uh, this veneer sections and what are these actually unless you know you will not be able to create it so knowing is important why we are doing it is my second step and judge to judge it where all we can do and where we also should not do that is my third thing yes it's sort of cladding and cutting work correct okay let's see some next that is my our non-load bearing wall so previous one was load bearing now we will see some categories in non-load wearing walls. Okay. So in non-load wearing walls, we have different categorization as panel, partition, curtain, and freestanding walls. So what are they now? Panel walls, what will happen? There will be a panel which will be supported by a frame. If you can see the image, there is a panel which is supported by a frame and it is dividing your space so this is simply paneling framing a or partition is partition will have a complete framing and on that be similar or smaller panels are arranged so there will be a complete framing in partition wall but on paneling similar simple panels are used using your supporting structures which is called part of frames okay there will be a complete framing group in your partition wall now, what a curtain wall is? In the previous one, where you asked where is there that is curtain wall or not, literally look at here. We'll get to answer here also. So, what your curtain wall is? Curtain wall is an independent wall which takes up its own load as well as your load of some of the slabs or beams. It can take up their load as well. So it is simply you can see your curtain wall is a piece wall which can take up its load and some other load as well. These walls are usually RCC structures. Brick curtain walls are rarely used because of because if you have to give it that much strength, you will have to increase its width. Now, the moment you are increasing width, you are using space, which is very costly nowadays. That is why brick curtain walls are rarely used. If wherever you have used the curtain wall, use RCC curtain wall. That is, sending walls and they uh, takes up their own load as well as takes their load of structure as well. Now, after curtain wall, we have freestanding wall. I think I have discussed this freestanding. Freestanding are uh, uh, your garden wall, you can say, your parapet, you can say which is just a wall, but from the top, there is no uh, bonding or there is no structure which is covering it from top, which is just standing steady. Your boundary ball, your parapet or such structures are your freestanding balls. Okay. Let's see some other wall. Reinforcement we provide in wall where it is required or it is usually provided in earthstone structures, earthstone uh, places. In reinforcement, what we do is we provide a layer of reinforcement after each three or four courses. Now, these reinforcements could be either laid vertically, this will create a bed, or it can be used in vertical members as well. Now, you can see in vertical members, if the brick or wall is trying to overturn, it will prevent that. But if it is providing horizontally, the overturning is less prevented, but it prevents that cracking among it. If there is a possibility of to crack of the wall to crack, it prevents that cracking, but this prevents this overturning in the brick. Okay. So these are the two types of reinforcement we provide in bricks. 
we have some general considerations look at these considerations because they can be in the options and there may be options provided pick the incorrect one or pick the correct one such kind of questions come so there these considerations help the general consideration link should conform to the specific requirement of work it should be saturated well before use okay since it absorbs moisture if you will use it without being uh, enough soak into water it will then try to absorb moisture okay. later on this which will damp your wall okay so it will be well uh, saturated with water before being used laid frog upward so your frog will be upward not downward to that okay so this is an important line where you you will position your frog in the layering of brick or in the positioning of brick when you are creating different layers or courses of brick so it will be upward so table bond has to be avoided continuous vertical joints anywhere in the world that means your that one stack stack is avoided a good quality mortar has to be used thickness not more than 10 mm as we have learned the nominal and uh, actual brick length the thickness of mortar should not be more than 10 mm to see some more consideration it should be raised uniformly i think whatever you are creating be uniform it should have a good workmanship poor workmanship will reduce the strength of the wall it will gives you an uniform look and you will have to plaster it when you will necessarily have to plaster it if your workmanship is poor even you are using a a quality brick brick use of bats should be minimized uh greater than 1 meter in a day's work now read that line with this line if you are raising your brick courses no case the height masonry greater than 1 meter in a day's work okay greater than 1 meter you can create it in uh It, there is as a limit okay after 1 minute you will after 1 meter you will have to stop you can use the next day for uh, raising more than that plumb plumb bob vertical faces are used what is a plumb bob let us look at here what a plumb bob is if this is your brick layer and you are lifting you are facing it plumb bob is a tool something like this it is used to check the whether you are moving vertical uniformly or you are something tilting like this or you are tilting like this so plumb using plumb bob you are you keep your uh, wall straight this is a tool helps to keep your wall straight okay so this is what is being mentioned here ki vertical faces should be checked with plumb bob ki whether they are going perpendicular or they are going in a straight direction or not okay when the construction is over it have to water well with for two weeks so for two weeks you will have to water your walls well so that it can uh, absorb enough moisture and later on when you are plastered it you have using it there should be no dampness it could prevent that dampness so this is from my side from your brick whatever your uh, brick bonds are masonry units are we uh, began with the construction of bricks and then we will look at different aspects of that so this is why what we have covered now if and if you will cover all this i mean all the slides if you will cover it for the big portion that will be enough but if you are curious enough you can oh yes there is no end to it there is no limit to it you can always read more than me okay so this is for now now i have some question mentioned allowable absorption percentage is i think up to 10% not more than 10% there are tests on brick also i have not mentioned that test just to I mean be on to to be on track that there are tests like water absorption test if fluorescence test if fluorescence or if fluorescence if fluorescence let us let me explain if fluorescence at least this i will explain uh, if fluorescence is on a on your brick na when you are watering the brick when you are damping it there sometimes you oh my god just wait for a minute okay so what happens is uh when we damp when we keep the brick in water for some time there are white deposits 
uh, deposits on the brick. That is already uh, the salt present in the brick that gets deposited on the brick. That is called efflorescence. I hope I know the spelling efflorescence. Yeah. And this is tested through a test that is called efflorescence test. So bricks will have your water absorption test, your this efflorescence test, your compressibility test, it is being compressed. It should uh, be able to wear, I think, 10 Newton per millimeter square. This is the strength water uh, each brick should have. Uh, you have your scratch resistance test where your brick is scratched using uh, fingernails. When you are scratching it, it should not be scratched. A good quality brick should not be scratched. So you have your scratch resistance test. And similar to have, you have one or two more tests. Uh, standard now see the point is ki when I was going through the syllabus uh, in your syllabus it was mentioned ki bonds in bricks now I can cover all the portions of that brick ki how it is manufactured what are the tests standards usually we have in tests and one of the standard which is uh, which, which was there in the sizing of brick I have already mentioned but I have not mentioned the test and some other aspects just to be on track. Key, we have to cover this portion as well. And as I mentioned, from the main portion, what is being there, I have looked a little bit here and a little bit there, but it's a little bit, not complete one. I can finish the complete portion, but that will be mostly your gate. That will become your gate portion then because gate covers everything. But what happens in a competitive exam? they keep themselves constricted to some uh, limited aspect they do not cover the complete gate yeah so this is why uh, some of that gate portion is removed it is purely uh, means uh, it is purely created from this aspect now obviously when you're creating it from this aspect i have gone much deeper into the bond thing only as you can see i have discussed bonds in detail so that is the thing but yes, always ask if you want. I will be open to that. I, if I will know, I will answer then and there. Or else, I will also. Uh, yeah. For the from the previous year questions, now I think this is the first time this such kind of exam is uh, being conducted from Telangana. We are trying to get some questions, but we are getting from everywhere that this is the first time they are uh, doing it. They are taking it. That is why previous year questions we are unable to get. Yes. But we have previous year that some questions I am asking from other exams or Tamil Nadu exams. We have some questions that is for your practice. So uh, my next slide is that only. Let's try to answer some questions which is from your pre previous year Tamil Nadu exam as well as some of them from GED and some of them are from some other different examples. Okay. So I will give you time for one or two minutes. To try to answer this. You can write in your answers in chat box. So try to answer this. The main constituents of brick earth are given below choose the wrong one so which is not a constituent of brick earth is it alumina magnesia it is lime it is mica it is silica or is it is it iron oxide so which is a wrong constituent can you see that i think we have discussed this okay i'm having answer very good Mica, great. But about others, try to answer it. It will for your practice only, okay? Excellent. So this was, yeah, others, very good. So this was in one of the slides also okay what are the in a, i think it's the first or second slide only what are the constituents of your break so obviously it will have alumina it will have lime at the binding material will have lime mm -hmm. it has silica and iron oxide which gives you that color now brick does not have mica in it okay so this is the third one is your answer which is c let's answer this now the nominal size of modular brick the nominal size of modular brick is nominal size of modular brick. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. 
सी हुआ आंसर सी नॉट एक्चुअल नॉमिनल दिस इज नॉट एक्चुअल नॉमिनल यस यस इट्स सो दिस इज योर एक्चुअल एंड दिस इज योर नॉमिनल विल हैव एक्सटेंडेड विद of that mot r yes now see in your exams now what will they ask they ask similar questions one you will have the exam and you will look back your paper you will think ki oh ho ye to we know this we already knew we would have scored much better than that so this is where we lack practice we read and read and read but do not practice questions the right way should be read and then practice 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 and then again read and then practice 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 follow this method this really is the best method practice is important so reading obviously once you get the stuff try to practice it then again there will be some lag try to fill that void by reading it again now again practice it so please follow this method not just read and read and read okay okay let us see the next one brick attains red color due to the presence of which one the red color is due to the presence of excellent very good yes so it is because of this iron oxide okay we will try to read, retrieve some more sums uh, some more questions from previous year and other uh, in bonding part as well so that you can practice more you will all will get that eventually now apart from this brick we also have to discuss stone masonry so again before jumping into directly ki what kind of stone masonry we will have we will have a little bit look into what stones are how they are categorized or what are the different categories of stones which we are using okay so we will look into again the main point will be there there will be something here and there will be something there again so let us start the uh, stone portion now but we will try to classify rock because this classification is important so we will class try to classify it geographically physically and chemically we will mostly focus on this geographical classification like how they are created in geographical classification primarily we have igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rock now igneous rock are result of your molten magma when there is a volcanic eruption this molten uh, molten magma comes out when it cools down it creates that igneous rocks now we know what igneous rocks are just knowing this will not help we will have to know some names as well so your granites this is the major igneous rock which we are using with which we use granite you, the name will come again and again if you read about the materials uh, don't do it so many six don't do it please okay so granite sienite diorite and i have large crystal so these are some uh, igneous rock which we have here now sedimentary as the name suggests is formed as a result of sedimentation what is sedimented things come and just sediment as a, as a place uh layers upon layers are getting created and under heat and pressure it forms rock now you know rock formation takes thousands and more than that more than those years so it takes time uh, yes it takes time it creates that rock and this is a result pure result of sedimentation now sedimentary rocks will have layers among them which is not there in igneous rock okay how they created we understood again examples are important so certain primary examples are limestone dolomite shale sandstone if you can see and limestone two major example i will say for the sedimentation rock okay our next one is metamorphic rock so what metamorphic rocks are it is improved form of sedimentary rock okay it is improved form of sedimentary why when these sedimentary rocks goes again with high pressure and high heat conditions they turns into metamorphic rocks what igneous was igneous rocks were already molten so they are already burned this sedimentation is again sedimentary is again going through heat and pressure so it is attaining the character of igneous but it has not reached there it is not igneous 
but is he trying to attain the character of igneous so it is really close to igneous rock but it is an improved form of sedimentation of sedimentary rock that is why it will again have layers you can see the layers layers will be visible but the difference will be difference will be in sedimentary rocks if you will see between two layers you will be able to identify the gap easily you will be able to identify the strata easily but if you will come to metamorphic rock obviously it is visible but the strata or the gap you will not be able to identify that much this is more denser more compressed form of sedimentary rock some examples are gneiss schist slate and marble you, i think most of you have heard it marble is the primary example of your metamorphic rock so in igneous granite in sedimentary sandstone and limestone in metamorphic marble or slate okay so prime examples are important because from the name of the rock its the categorization could be asked the uh, granite refers to which category or marble refers uh, or marble refers to which category so these things are asked. this was based on your genetic or geological classification our next one is based on physical classification now don't get this the uh, if it is igneous it cannot be stratified this is just a different way of classifying same rock okay so if the stratified you will see as i was saying ki sandstone you can able to see the gap or the layers you will be able to identify the layers if you can see the image you will be able to see the identify the layers found in there this is called strata or layers it has different strata which is identifiable and can be be looked and can be feel can be felt easily it is why they are under category of stratified rock so if we will relate it with the genetical classification what kind of rock will come in this category your sedimentary rock okay so again the example will be sandstone or limestone next we have unstratified next we have unstratified now unstratified will not uh, show you the, that that strata that is a combined form it will it will be much denser if we will try to uh, break it or try to cut it from the middle you will see no i mean a layer is forming on that so if we will relate it to that physical uh, genetic classification your molten or your um igneous rock will come in this category like granite or basalt now this was the sedimentary this was igneous let us look into the foliated rocks now if we look into this category foliated will show the parallel arrangement so the layers will be visible but it is not stratified by using hand i will not able to guess here here, here this is that layer this is that layer but this is visible the layers are obviously visible since it has gone through enough heat and pressure this has become denser than sandstone that is why the strata are less visible but obviously the layers are visible since it's the improved form of sandstone now if we will let it from there it will be metamorphic rock like this these and such things okay so these are the physical and uh, genetic classifications of building stones we have let's look into some common building stones don't do this so many fixes please don't do this okay now once we have a slight idea ki yes what different types of stones are the idea was important because you then you will wonder ki yeah, kya hota hai stone what are they from where they are coming we cannot directly use that okay so once you have that idea we have some common building stone which are granite sandstone i have just explained the uh, i have just mentioned the stone and where it is formed you can read it to this and you will have the slight idea ki yes on the map you can create your memory map uh, where on the map of india you will be able to guess ki yes ye yahan aa raha hai yahan aa raha hai so granite in these places if you will come to sandstone it is in up mp rajasthan primarily if you will come to your limestone okay uh, the space i have not mentioned if you will come to gneiss 
it is in andhra pradesh karnataka gujarat and tamil nadu if you will come to marble it is rajasthan gujarat and andhra pradesh now why have i mentioned place when you are picking up stone for some work its local availability is important since transporting stone from one place to another will have a higher cost so when we have to select a stone which i have to use its local reach its local availability is important so before deciding which stone we are going to use we have to see ki at my location what stone is locally available otherwise we will have to bear that transportation cost which is because of the weight because of the high amount of weight i will say is a lot of a lot of cost in that okay the place is important now we have some uh, artificial stones as well first one is your cement concrete block block so just using cement concrete these blocks are created artificial marble uses cement with uh, sand with portland cement and they are casted on the required shape using the required shape or the molders they are casted in uh, several shapes that is artificial marble two things we have is terrazzo and mosaic look at these things terrazzo and mosaic both uses broken stone chips so if you have broken stone chips you can create a flooring or you can create a shape out of that in terrazzo what we do is we create a mortar layer and we paste this stone chips in such a manner this is my terrazzo what will happen with the mosaic is we are again using the stone chips but it is more aesthetic to terrazzo and on the layer of concrete we are not i mean engraving it like the concrete is visible in this case in this case the concrete will lay down at the bottom and the stone chips uniform stone chips will be used to create such uh, aesthetic shapes that is normal tactile and this is a slight difference between these two in this it is done on purpose in this also this is a cheaper and stone chips you are using so broken stone will be much cheaper than the stones which we are you which we will use so this is a cheaper option this is for aesthetic and will have a cost okay good cost next we have reconstructed stone so read the name reconstructed that does not mean it uh, i mean we are doing something it is constructed with the help of stone powder when the stone is blasted now and taken out from stone quarry it will have some powders like if you are cutting wood or if you are shaping wood if you you have will have wood, wood powder all now we collect that wood powder and we use that for different purposes similarly when you are taking out stone from stone quarries you will have stone powders all around so we use that stone powder we mix that with limestone and we create such reconstructed stones for use our next one is bituminous so it is i mean the same stone but there is a layer of bituminous on that stone it is mostly used in areas where we have to stone use the stone under water as this layer prevents the entry of moisture in the stone so it becomes a waterproof it becomes mostly waterproof and dust proof it is why it is used in those areas now this could be any stone which is layered this a uh, bituminous uh, molten bituminous it is laid in and it is used okay there are certain advantages of these artificial stones over normal stones as it could be available anywhere like you can create it anywhere there is a less density so there is a advantages of weight there are third several defects in natural stones but if you are creating it in artificial stones those defects are not there those defects are taken care of they are uh, damp free you do not have to take care for that deterioration strength strength is good and you can create it depending upon your demand how your demand is what is your what is your situation so depending all that you can put all the stuff in that and you can create it according to your uh, need what you need that so it will give you that flexibility it will give you that customization so this is the basic uh, uses or advantages of your artificial stones now i have some sums on that that natural granite used for clad so, so granite belongs to which category igneous acid sedimentary or metamorphic which category granite belong to yes it is 
igneous as discussed correct let's see the next one the appropriate material for flooring of an external ramp if you are using an external ramp whether you will provide a polished granite or wax polished marble glazed or rough finish yeah since ramp is mentioned and external is mentioned we will obviously use rough finish so that it will end that slipping basalt is of what origin if you have looked at the slide you will be able to answer it basalt is of what origin i think you missed the name the granite was in focus yes it's a igneous granite was in focus so you missed the basalt that was in the second number i think okay now we will come to masonry but it's already time so we will uh, look into the stone masonry tomorrow and after completing it we will jump into our next topic so this is it for today uh, if you want something some change or if you want you have suggestion for upcoming lectures you can add that or as i said for doubts you can ask it anywhere even after the class you can uh, get it to me okay thank you all for joining you can have your dinner if you have a doubt you can ask otherwise we can call it a day okay thank you okay everyone Yes, yes, that will be shared. That will be shared. Notes and reading materials, everything will be shared to you. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.